بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالہ اور خان ہیر اور تدائی ویڈ دی ایگزیمپلز آن دی پروپرٹیز آف کنینیس ٹائم فوری سٹارز فارم ویڈی سیمپلر ویڈی ایزیر بات یو نو جس تو کمپائل دی تینگز اپ دیز آر دی پروپرٹیز دی ویڈی سٹیڈ ویڈی آلریڈی پروفت تدائی وی جس سی ایلیٹل ایگزیمپلز آن دی Fine. So let's say the first property that I've written over here is linearity. So if uh, a signal in the time domain is a linear combination of two or more signals, the corresponding Fourier transform would be the linear combination of the individual Fourier transforms. Example. Example is if my signal is x of t is exponential of negative a the absolute of t and its corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega is unknown, what do you do? So you know what this signal represents. Yes, you know that this signal is an exponential signal represented like some sort like this, right? So what could I do? Can I not break it into two parts? I can, which means that I can write that my x of t is exponential of negative a t u of t, which is the right hand side portion, plus exponential of positive a t u of minus t, which is the left hand side portion. So I have represented my given signal x of t as a linear combination of two signals. Now what would be the corresponding Fourier transform? So the corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega, this would be what? It would be the linear combination of these two Fourier transforms. We know the Fourier transform for this is a 1 over a plus j omega. We know the Fourier transform for this is a 1 over a minus j omega. So this would be like this. So, so which means you can further uh, do what? You can do it a minus j omega plus a plus j omega. So j omega would cancel out. You would have a 2a upon a squared uh, plus omega squared. And isn't it like this? It is. The graph is given in the book. You can see it yourself. Or you can also prove it, uh, you know, by the, by the Fourier transform formula. You would get the very same thing. That's it for the first one. The second property is the time shifting property. I've written over there the time shift property. Time shift. So I'm doing it like this to make it a little colorful. X of t minus t naught, you shift it by some amount, you get something multiplied. The complex exponential signal is multiplied. How is this? The original signal, let's say delta of t, we know the Fourier transform for this is 1. Now what do I have is if I have a signal that is shifted t minus 1. So what would be the Fourier transform? So which means minus 1. So over here you would have to multiply it by a minus 1. So this would come out to be plus. So this would have an exponential of j omega naught. And the previous is 1. So this would be 1. And this is the new Fourier transform. No, this would be a minus. Over here, if you have a minus, so over here you would have a minus as well. Right? Because this basically is a plus T naught, right? T naught was positive, so you had it a minus, so you gave it a minus over there. Yes, don't confuse it. If you have, if you have a delta of T plus 1, t plus 1. So in this case now this t naught is negative resulting in a plus over here. So which means now the corresponding Fourier transform would be an exponential of so uh, so that would is a minus so minus and minus this minus would cancel each other so you would have a plus and this would be an exponential of j omega naught and t uh, j omega j omega sorry t naught is plus t naught is plus 1 so you would have what uh, and the original Fourier transform is 1 and this is about the time shift property okay let's say I have a signal that is x of t is 1 over 2 times delta of t minus 1 plus delta of t plus 1 if this is my signal in the time domain, what would be the corresponding Fourier transform x of j omega? So have a look. The time shift property, the linearity property, both are getting involved. So 1 over 2 is a constant. It would stay outside. Let us say it's outside. Now you take the Fourier transform. So delta of t minus 1 has a Fourier transform exponential of negative j omega plus 
plus what delta of t plus what has a Fourier transform exponential of j omega. So have a look if you combine the whole thing is it not cause of omega? It is. So which means this is cause of omega. And isn't it like this? It is. Fine. The next property it's time reversal. So number third I have written over there with the green color is time reversal. So now what can I do it if I have let's say a signal x of t which is exponential of negative a t u of t right. So we know that the corresponding Fourier transform is 1 over a plus j omega. Now if you time reverse it if you time reverse it x of minus t which means you put t is equal to minus t over there so you would have an exponential of positive a t u of minus t now and now what would be the corresponding Fourier transform so in the original Fourier transform you do what you put omega equal to minus omega and now the new Fourier transform would be a minus j omega and isn't it like this we already have proved it in the video of complex experimental signal this is right so again the property has been satisfied the fourth the fourth is the time scaling property the fourth is the time scaling property let's say we consider the same signal exponential of negative a t u of t right but now we have an x of 2t so we have what we have x of 2t x of 2t is the signal which means now my signal would be exponential of negative 2at and u of 2t u of 3t u of 4t is the same as u of t so i could write it over here what would be the corresponding Fourier transform so it would be what you have a 1 over the absolute of a 1 over the absolute of a is 2 of course and then you have the same Fourier transform this one where you put omega equal to omega by a so this would be 1 upon a minus j times omega is omega and divided by a is 2 fine so now you take what you take the the LCM of it you take 1 upon 2 is this one 1 upon what do you have 2 is the LCM so you have a 2a minus j omega and this is a whole divided by 2 so if this 2 gets upward uh, or, or let me you know close the bracket over here now what do we have is 1 upon 2 is the same you get this 2 upward you have 2 divided by 2a minus j omega this 2 get cancel out now you have 1 upon 2a minus j omega and isn't it like this 2a plus j omega it would be a plus j omega yes yes sorry this is a plus j omega so this is what the Fourier transform is. You can prove it by the by the formula as well. What is the Fourier transform? It's 1 over a plus j omega. Where over here a is 2a. So you have a 2a plus j omega. This is what the time scaling property says. The fifth property. The fifth property is what? It's the property of duality. It's the property of duality. If we are asked to find the Fourier transform of any constant value, find Fourier transform of a DC signal A. So with the help of duality property, how can we do it? We know that we have to relate it to any time domain signal, right? So do we remember any Fourier transform? where the any Fourier transform pair where the Fourier transform is a constant value yes we have that signal and what is that signal that signal is an impulse right yes that is an impulse so which means if you have an impulse delta of t in the time domain the corresponding is one right and if you have a weight involved if you have a weight involved so you have an a delta of t so the corresponding Fourier transform is a isn't it like this so which means now we are asked to find the Fourier transform of a so if you put it in the time domain over there what do you have to do you have to multiply it with a 2 pi the duality property implies what now if you have this a in the time domain so the duality property implies if a is in the time domain the corresponding Fourier transform is 2 pi multiplied to the 
this signal now this would go to the frequency domain delta of and you would have to free, uh, reverse it as well which means delta of negative omega and this is what it is 2 pi delta of negative omega which means now you know uh, delta of omega means what it is an impulse located at t omega equal to 0 right and again if you have delta of negative omega so this again means the same thing so this means this is an even signal so which means if your time reverse at cell it would be the same so even signal implies what that a has the corresponding Fourier transform equal to 2 pi and delta of omega and this we already have proved. You can see the graphical interpretation yourself. The next is let's say x of t is exponential of jt. x of t is exponential of jt. Now we are asked to find the Fourier transform for this signal. So remember, uh, we, we want it in the frequency domain representation. So do we remember any Fourier transform pair where we have the Fourier transform as this signal? We want you to apply the duality property, right? So yes, we've just proved the exponential of JT. Where have we proved? I think we saw it over here somewhere. Yes. So in the uh, in the frequency domain, it has to be J omega, of course, right? So this is the signal J omega. So which means the corresponding is this one, JT. So what do I have is? So what would be now the corresponding signal? This would be this signal in the frequency domain for this one. But with what modification? The modification would be like this. You have to multiply a 2 pi to it. You have to multiply 2 pi to it. And you have to reverse the, in place of t you put omega but a minus omega. So you have a minus omega plus 1. Isn't it like this? It is. So which means what? Now if you take this common which is a 2 pi. Now you have a delta of. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Delta of and you take a negative common you have an omega minus 1. Now uh, have a look. Uh, isn't this. Uh, is this an even signal or what? Yes, delta is an even signal, of course. The impulse is an even signal, so the negative would not have any effect. So, which implies what? That we have got that if you have an exponential of jt in the time domain, so in the frequency domain, you would have a signal that is 2 pi delta of omega minus 1. And this is our answer through the duality property. The duality property we've already seen in the previous video in the example with the sink function. I may touch it over here. I will give it a touch. The next signal is, let's say, exponential of negative, uh, negative jt. If my time domain signal x of t is negative jt. So now have a look. Do we remember any signal? Do we know any signal whose Fourier transform? Do we know any Fourier transform pair where the Fourier transform is exponential of negative j omega? We've just seen exponential of negative j omega. So we apply it over here. Now what do we have? As if we had a signal delta of t minus 1, let me go a little stepwise to finish the confusion. As delta of t minus 1 is a signal having Fourier transform exponential of negative j omega. So, now if we have this sort of a signal in the time domain, the duality property implies if you have now j of t, exponential negative j t in the time domain, so the corresponding Fourier frequency domain signal would be what you would have um, uh, you would have first of all a 2 pi multiplied to this time domain signal that is delta but you would have to take a negative of omega negative of omega minus 1 fine now if I take the negative common negative so we have an omega plus 1 and and this is what it is again you this impulse is an even signal so which means that i have got my exponential of negative jt the corresponding fourier transform is 2 pi delta of omega plus 1 and that is the answer if you haven't understood the two because uh, the first two because i skipped this first step so this is mandatory uh, the third example is where you would have understood it in a very very effective manner so let's say i do what i remove the board now first
Okay, let me touch the, the sing function as well. In the previous video, I already told you, if you have some sort of a function sine of xt divided by pi t. So this is a sing function, right? So what would be the corresponding Fourier transform for this? So the corresponding Fourier transform for this would be a rectangular sort of a pulse. This would now be by x of omega. And this sort of a function and where this would be negative x depending on this value of x this would be positive x this is with respect to omega the weight or the the the, the amplitude would be one fine yes now if you have you you reverse it you reverse it so what do you have actually you have to multiply 2 pi over there so if you have a time domain signal like this a time domain x of t if this is starting at an at a negative x and finishing at an x so the corresponding would be what this would be a 2 pi multiplied to sign off x t upon pi t and if you don't want to have the if you want to have only this thing in the frequency domain if so this is one so if you want it to be one over here so you you have to divide it by a two pi over here and that is what i wanted to say but have a look i have a mistake and what's the mistake this is not t over here now this is your omega and this thing basically represents your sync function sync function fine so this is about the fifth property and now i remove this space as well okay the next is with the blue color it's the frequency shift property this is the frequency shift property now again you know uh, we know we know very well uh, this is my one two three four five sixth property is the frequency shift we know very well that my uh, uh, my exponential of jt has the corresponding fourier transform of 2 pi delta of omega minus one right but let's say now i'm using the frequency shifting property let's say i have my x of d as exponential of jt its corresponding x of omega is unknown so what do i do have a look have a look i know that the impulse function has fourier transform equal to one isn't it like this or or I can write that if 1 we have in the time domain, so in the frequency domain we would have a 2 pi delta of minus omega and delta of minus omega in, or, or delta of omega is the same thing because of the even nature. So can I write my this signal exponential of jt into 1? Exponential of jt into 1. So which means have a look, the corresponding Fourier transform would be what? 1 is my signal x of t over here i have x of omega minus omega naught if something is multiplied with omega naught so omega naught is one over here let me use a color so we don't confuse it omega naught is one right in this particular thing so what do i have i would have to shift my this particular thing by one unit so which means that my fourier transform would be two pi delta of omega minus one and isn't it like this it is let me write it over here omega naught is equal to one this was multiplied by the complex exponential signal so it has to be shifted in the frequency domain by the units omega naught now let me tell you over here omega naught omega naught it does not represent the the fundamental frequency okay omega naught does not represent the fundamental frequency rather it's what it's only the shifting the, the shifting uh, amount the amount by which the signal is being shifted is that clear till here so uh, you know now some people tell me that the longer videos are not good so i believe this would be a 20 25 minutes video so i say that we continue this with in the in the next video why because we've already got six till here so one two three four five six remains so the next six we do in the next video 
okay so i finished this over here so that we don't get bored till the next video till care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye